Yo! What up, what up, what up? <laughs> What's going on? How's everybody doing? Where we, where we all at? How y'all doing? Bum, 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 da, 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 da. Let me know where y'all coming in from. Hola, everybody. Hey, good to see you, Ashley. What's up, baby? How y'all doing? Yeah. That's right, my peoples. What's going on in the hood? Ha <laughs> ha. Hey, welcome, everybody. Good to see everybody. We got Chicago, Spain. Hey, Alberto Gordo, where in Spain um, are you? You know, me and Eric, my business partner, we are going to be in Barcelona, August um, 3rd to the, I don't know, what is it? August 3rd to, I think, the 20th. If you're around, man, I'd love to meet up. You can show us around town. Show us how you, Catalan, do it. I think we're going from Barcelona down to Valencia, and then uh, we're going to end in Malaga. And I'm not sure where Bilbao is. You buy any of these places. You got to come find me, baby. <laughs> India, my brother. My Indian brother. Good to see you guys. Colorado in the hood. Nairobi. Okay. Oxford, England. Awesome. I actually got two, two guys in my mentorship group right now um, that live in England. I love uh, the European trading hours. You know, he goes to work, comes home at 2 o'clock. And then he starts trading the U.S. markets. Uh, it's pretty sick. Yeah. All right. Let's get this thing started, guys. So uh, welcome. Uh, I'm going to be doing this on a weekly basis, you know, talking about uh, cryptocurrencies. Uh, we'll be doing, you know, a series of short webinars and stuff. Um, so every day, every week, what I'll do is I'll pick a, a specific topic uh, and start getting you guys kind of introduced to uh, what I've been really, really having a, a lot of fun trading. And I think it's a great opportunity for you guys uh, to really get in uh, to some action that uh, you can make some money on. You know, I've been trading stocks for my whole adult life. You know, my whole adult life, I've been trading stocks and it's been an epic ride. Like I, I love trading stocks, it's my passion. Uh, it's what I do. And I think about trading all day, all night. But now, <laughs> that's a salakuto. That's dirty, man. But uh, I, mean, I, I trade all the time. And so now, guess what? It's, uh, I, 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 I stumbled upon some new things, right? And so uh, I really want to kind of get you guys involved in uh, the cryptocurrency market uh, in terms of what we do. So today, what I'm going to do is, First, we're going to just go over the charts for the three main cryptocurrencies that I trade, uh, which is uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and then Litecoin. So uh, first of all, what we're going to do is we'll start with Bitcoins and then we'll go from there. So for those of you guys that uh, are new to all this and you don't know really what's going on or what this program is, or anything like that, what you can do is, so this program I use is called coinagy.com. What you guys can do, it because most likely you probably won't have this um, right now, ooh, you guys can go in and go, we can go in and why don't we do this? We'll go in and, hold on, let me get this to US dollars. Good, you guys can go in and why don't you do this? Open a tab and go to uh, tradingview.com. This is free, so this guy, this will help you guys a lot. So go to tradingview.com, and if when you go in tradingview.com, put in the ticker. So you can go in here where it says ticker, and what I want you guys to do is put in uh, BTC and then uh, USD. Right, and so it's going to have all these different things, but just go in here. There's all these different pricing for 
uh, Bitcoin USD, but just use this one Coinbase because that's where I trade at. So I want you to come in and hit that. And now what you're going to be able to do is set up your charts like mine. So uh, what I want you to do is uh, when you get to trading view, I'm going to give you um, some ways to just set up your charts. OK, so we're all looking at the same thing, if that's cool. So when you go to this BTC USD, I want you to click this here and put in one day. All right. And then what we want to be doing is adding in indicators. OK, what we want to be doing is adding in indicators. So, you know, when you come in and you just have your blank chart here, I want you to start adding an indicator. So come in here and click this button indicator. And I want you to put in uh, exponential. So we're all looking at the same thing. So the next week we'll all have the same layouts too. So click this exponential and then good. Now we, I want you to type in moving and we're just gonna go to regular, go here. I want you to type in simple. All right, so they just, we'll just add in regular moving average. Dun, 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 dun. So click that twice. Okay, so you're going to have three different things on your chart. Okay, so one's going to be an exponential, and the other two are going to be moving averages. So what I want you to do is change this. So you got all these buttons here. I want you to change this to 20. All right, change this to 20. Uh, so now you're going to have a 9 and a 20. And then boom, I want you to change this one to 50, okay? And then we're, what we're gonna need to do is change the colors on these. So where it says style, let's make this one like a hot pink, right? That's kind of sexy. And then this where this one says 20, I want you to come in here and change the color, hit style. And what, uh, it's tradingview.com. T-R-A-D-I-N-G view.com. Come in here and change this color to, let's just give it like a little bit of an orange so we get some contrast. And now we're good. Okay. So, guys, this is what, you know, your daily chart's going to look like. Now, this is a free platform. You can look at intraday charts. You can look at uh, really anything. So, it's pretty cool. So, now we have a general idea of what um you know our charts are going to look like and then i'm going to show you how to look at look up the different ones okay so this is bitcoin so i want you to add in uh bitcoin and then from here what we want to be doing is you we will build a watch list of all the other different coins so there's litecoin so there's eth usd so add these into your watch list so what you can do is if you type in eth usd boom Click the one that says Coinbase and then add that into your watch list and then type in again LPC USD. And you're going to get the Litecoin. Okay. So it's LTC USD, BTC USD, and ETH USD. All right. So now you've got three. Different. These are the three major ones. So there's a whole host of uh, coins, guys. I mean, there's hundreds of them out there, if not more. But these are kind of the three main ones that uh, give you the most bang for the buck in terms of safety, but range, uh, all of that fun stuff. So when you're looking at this chart now, this is this is what's exciting about bitcoins, right? You know, is the trend, right? So you have been on this monster trend for really, really quite some time. And you can see recently, um, starting in May, you went on this really this run where you got this kind of 300% return. So, guys, when you're talking about trading, nothing goes up forever, okay? Uh, stocks, currencies, anything that trades, they're like people. After a certain amount of run, they've got to come in and rest, okay? Everything's got to rest. And so when you go sideways for a period of time, uh, that's really a healthy thing, right? It didn't come crashing back. You're just kind of right now stuck in this range. So, you know, overall, that's a healthy thing. But the beauty of it is when you can catch this, right? This is what we're going to be in the game to be trying to do. So you've got this beautiful trend on uh, Bitcoin. 
And then there's Ethereum. So if you go to ETH USD, what you'll see here is Ethereum. And this is the one that I primarily trade, okay? Uh, I trade this more than Bitcoins by a lot. And the reason is, uh, well, you can see it still has that same amazing type of run. You know, this thing started going from 80 bucks to 420 bucks. Um, and now it's kind of relaxing for a bit. But you'll find this one a good trader compared to Bitcoin because there's more volume, okay? So when you're at your broker or what they call exchanges, uh, you know, because of the price of Bitcoin, they don't really do necessarily that much volume per day. The liquidity, which is the ability to get in and out, are, is, is a little bit slow. Where in Ethereum, it's really easy to get in and out. And you still have the ability to have big moves, right? Where you can go up $100 in a day, right? That's, the, that's where we want to be in, right? Can we get in and out easily? And then, of course... Right? Does it have the range that we want? So you have ET, ETH, BTC, and then the last one to add into yours is Litecoin. All right? And Litecoin is kind of the, it's the third one, um, but this one's actually really fun to trade too because it's got a lot of liquidity and you still have the huge moves and it's not that pricey either. Okay? And Litecoin is the one that's still really riding in its trend. Um, it has not broken down yet. And so I do find right now this is probably one of the more interesting ones as it is still riding up its 50-day moving average. So what the heck does all this stuff do on a chart, right? What? So uh, we're going to go into that, Kiwi. Uh, so what the heck does all this stuff do on a chart? So first of all, we have a few different aspects here, right? These things here are called candles, Okay. The lines are known as moving averages. So what do moving averages do, guys? Does anybody know what a, what a moving average is for? A moving average shows, does two different things, guys, okay? So we have a nine, a 20, and a 50. These serve two very, very specific functions, okay? Two very specific functions. The first function of a moving average is to help you identify trends on particular time frames. okay? So in trading, you have a short, an intermediate, and a long-term time frame. okay? So your 50-day moving average, which would be your pink line here, okay? Your 50-day moving average signifies your long-term trend, okay? So there's two different things. So how does the moving average show the long-term trend? By literally the slope, okay? If the slope of that particular moving average is going up or down, it will tell you the trend on that time frame. Your 20 is your intermediate term time frame, and your 9 EMA is your short-term time frame. So let's look at Litecoin here for an example. What do we know about the trends right now for Litecoin? Well, first of all, if we're looking at this, there's a couple different things. Number one, the last month, there's really been no action, right? It's just been sitting around in this range. You can see like it popped up and then it came back down, it popped up, it came back down, right? So on a short-term basis, what do you notice? Uh, what, what would you say about their tr its trend? That it's just been kind of hanging out for a while, right? So you can see like your, your 9 EMA is your blue line, okay? What you'll see here is your short-term trend is down. And your intermediate-term trend is also slightly down because they're starting to point down after really a, an incredible run where they were, they were running. So on a short-term intermediate basis, right, the, the fun time in Litecoin is, is slowed down. But what do you also see here? That your long-term trend is still pointing up. And so overall, the structure of what's happening in Litecoin is still positive. What you have to remember is this thing was $4, right? It went all the way to almost $60. So that's a 10, you know, 1,000% gain, if not more. Okay, and so this thing is resting. Now, on a long-term basis, this Litecoin still looks 
very healthy. It's still in a trend. But on a short and intermediate term basis, right, there's just not any action going on. So you can use your moving averages to signify that. And I'm going to show you how to kind of get in and out of these stocks with a few basic patterns. But uh, first, I want to talk a little bit about these, you know, moving averages and the trends and how to set up these charts. Now, the second thing that a moving average does, okay, so moving averages help you identify trends. What is the second thing that a moving average can help you do? Anybody know? Milo, you seem to know a lot about this stuff. What, what, what's the second thing that we can use a moving average for? Oh, yeah, nobody knows. Come on. So the second thing, guys, that we can use moving averages for is to act as support and resistance. Great, Kiwi. That's what I'm talking about, baby. That's what I'm talking about. They can act as areas of support and resistance. So what is support and resistance, guys? In a nutshell, support and resistance is areas where demand or supply can come into a stock, okay? And so when you are identifying support areas, what that essentially means is that there can be potential demand that comes in <coughs> to the stock around those particular areas. So just something to be mindful of. Oh, yeah, Hansel. I'm a yeller, bro. I'm sorry. You may need to turn down the volume just a tad because I just belt. I don't know why that is. It's just I'm a talker, baby. I don't know what else to <laughs> I don't know what else to tell you. So trends, support, and resistance, okay, are the two things. Well, I've been on webinar since seven in the morning. So I'll lose my voice no matter what every single day. I'm trading live in front of my students all day. So I'm hooting and hollering literally for about 12 hours. <laughs> so we've got trends, support, resistance. So when you see this, you can actually use moving averages as potential bounce spots. You can see this Litecoin really respects its 50-day moving average. So on a longer term basis, that moving average can actually act as, um, as areas to buy in. Now, on the other side of things, okay, our short-term and intermediate-term things, your short-term moving averages work best when a stock is doing its initial trend. So once a stock really starts to move or a currency, I just interchange this term as I'm trading stocks all day, um, your 90 EMA will really, really come into play. So let's talk about this when we're looking at these bad boys. What is it that would cause you to get into, get into one of these bad boys, right? Like why would anybody, why would anybody want to get in at a particular level, okay? So when you're thinking about trading, always think about inflection points, okay? An inflection point is essentially how can I, a spot where you can get into a stock where the risk is low, that's it, right? An inflection point is just an area where you can get in where your risk is low. So how do you do that? Well, everything in trading is based on setups, okay? So what a setup is, a trading setup. A setup is a, a, list, of, a, a list of conditions that must trigger before a trade is taken. A list of conditions that must trigger before a trade is taken, okay? So when you're taking a trade, okay? I want you to always think of when you're taking a trade, you're a lawyer, right? You have to build and put in together pieces of evidence in your favor before it's worth using your hard earned money to put in that put in that trade. So anytime I look at a stock or a currency, right? What I'm doing is identifying it as a lawyer. I need to see X, Y, Z, B, A, all of that stuff before I can actually get into a trade. So as traders, we can minimize this by thinking about patterns, okay? 
patterns. So patterns are the key to really everything that you do in trading because what that does is it, it dumbs trading down a little bit. So when you're in a trade or looking at a trade, there are literally, I'm not joking, there are literally dozens of variables that you have to compute almost in an instantaneous basis, right, when you're trading. Well, that's impossible, right? We're, we're not computers here. So how can we do that? Well, by taking all those variables and kind of stereotyping them into set patterns, what we can start to do is have certain looks that when we see them, we know that the case has been built. We know that the case has been built when we see certain types of patterns. Okay, so I want you to always really think about this. Like cryptocurrency is fun and everybody's talking about just buy and hold, buy and hold. But you can do this in a different way, which is by identifying certain patterns and then waiting for them so that you can get in where your risk is low, but you're at an inflection point and so that you can really, really get something that's moving. So like, let's look at a couple like my favorite patterns on a longer term basis. And then the next week we'll talk a little bit more about day trading. So there's two different types of trading guys, right? Which is you have your longer term, a longer term trade, which is a longer term trade, which is what we call a swing trade. In Kiwi, I use 27 different patterns when I trade. So, <laughs> bro, it's not as easy as you think. So a longer term trade is a swing trade. So that's something where you're going to be buying and you're going to be holding for days to potentially weeks, okay? And then you have day trading, which is where you're getting in and out of stocks uh, within a handful of hours sometimes, even minutes, okay? So those are your two different types of things. Now, as a trader, it's very, very important to identify, well, number one, are you a longer term? So like when I built out your charts, right? When we built out our charts, See this, the way we did this, each one of these candles is one day, okay? Each one of these candles represents the action for one day, okay? And so, you know, you're holding this thing for a handful of days when you're trying to get into what's called a swing trade. Now, as a day trader, how you become a day trader essentially is you take your daily candles and you split them into smaller term time frames, right? So when I'm day trading, I use... 15-minute uh, charts, at least for cryptos, okay? So when I'm day trade, I'm going to go, say I like this. When I day trade, I'm going to go into a smaller term chart. So now the patterns that you use when you're day trading uh, is going to be completely different than the patterns that you would use for uh, a longer term type of trade. Okay, so let's go into a couple different things. So I'm going to give you one swing trade setup that I really like, and then I'll talk a little bit about day trading these bad boys also. Okay, so uh, uh, my favorite pattern when I am swing trading is what we call a flag pattern. Does anybody know what a flag pattern is? So a flag pattern is essentially a pattern that you trade once an initial thrust has been taken, okay? So when a stock or a currency comes out of a range, what you're looking for is that first consolidation to start doing this. So like when I first was starting to rip some of these Litecoins, right? I had, I, I, this wasn't even on my radar because this thing had just sat around forever. Then all of a sudden, you know, it pops up on the news and everybody's talking about, hey, this Litecoin has gone from $3 to $14. And I'm like, holy fuck, I just, <laughs> I just missed this epic run, right? That's how you think. But that's not what you have to do. When you are trading, know that when, a, when something pops hard, even if it's, that just sounds dirty, uh, <laughs> but even, even if it's up hundreds of percent, it doesn't matter. 
if you can get some type of sideways consolidation where your range has been tightened, then you can enter with reasonable risk to reward and start playing the next run. It's like when I started trading these, I've had a few epic trades in this, but once you start to see this thing pop up, right? And this happens in any of the currencies. So there's like hundreds of coins going on out there, right? Once you see the pop, what you're essentially doing is looking for that first sideways consolidation. The sideways consolidation will take three to 10 days. Three to 10 days of sideways consolidation is usually enough to build rest and energy so that it can go. Guys, stocks, currencies, they get their power from consolidations, from bases. And so anytime you see a big move, what you want to look for is that next sideways consolidation so that you can enter for another run. So what you need to do is get them clean though, right? So like, See how, like how this thing pops, and then you build in a really, really tight range here. See how, like how tight its range is here? So essentially, what are you building here, right? It's just a flag, right? So you've got yourself a flag pole, right, which is this run from 3 to 14, and then you've got this nice, easy-go-lucky sideways consolidation happening here, right? And if it doesn't look like this where it's really clean, see like how it's easy to identify, if it's easy to identify, then it's something worth taking. So within a flag, you want, you want to be drawing your trend lines across the top. You need at least three tests of that trend line for it to be a go. Your tell will be when it starts to break the top of the range and you have your 9 EMA writing right up under it, that will tell you that the pattern is so tight that it's ready to pop. Okay, so once that happens, you can buy it, and then you're going to put a stop right under your EMA. So I usually use the 20 EMAs just so I have a little bit of room, and then now I'm in this thing for the next push. Okay, now the thing with flag patterns is you need these really tight ones, right? If you don't have a tight one, then it's going to be really hard to do. So like see here, like after the pop, you didn't really get any tight action here, right? You know, there were plays that you could do on the dips, but you did not see a flag pattern that you could take. But what ends up happening over time is, what will end up happening over time is, you'll start to develop a range, okay? And that's the thing is always to remember, can I start to develop some type of range where I'm coming in and testing the resistance? The more times you come in and test the level, the more powerful it's going to be in terms of the breakout. So after the stock makes another run, you can see it takes almost a whole month here of sideways consolidation. But you can see, right, you come in and see how many times you're kind of testing this level here before it finally goes. So you're just building a nice longer term flag. So that's kind of one of my go-to setups. Uh, for this type of trading. And you'll see no matter what instrument you lose, use, you're going to have very, very similar patterns. Okay. So like if you're looking at ETH, when this thing starts to go, what do you notice about ETH when it first started to go? So this is when it's, it's this is February. Okay. So it finally starts to make a move, right? And you get this big pop. See how it goes from 11 to 14. Now look what happens here. You go sideways for three to 10 days, and then you're off to the races again, right? And now it's just a matter of playing these type of consolidations when you see them. See, after the big run, you get another tight consolidation, and then you're off to the races. Actually, my best trade out of these was in this particular one right here. See how, like, you get this nice, easy look, right? So... When you see this type of sideways movement, yes, it's the curl. When you see this type of sideways movement, don't get bored. See, a lot of times people just get bored. And they're like, oh, it's dead. Dead is good when you're talking about trading, guys. If something goes from $6 to 
to a hundred dollars. Well, guess what? It's not a, right. It's not a. It's not a machine. Like it can't just go up forever. You need to rest. When you rest, you allow fresh buyers to come in, and you allow a stock or currency to build up energy to make its next run. And so it's very, very important after big runs to have rest. When ETH finally collapsed here, right? Part of the problem was, well, look, in the beginning, you were getting these pops and then see, you would consolidate for almost a month and then you would pop and you would consolidate for a period of time. And so you were allowing rest to come in and you were stair-stepping your way higher. But then after it started running to 400, see how it wasn't taking any rest here? There was no rest here. So like you're just going from 200 to 300 to 400, but you're not resting. And so without rest, the odds of collapse come in much quicker, right? And then, and then you're going to have to rest for a long time. And that's kind of what's happening right now. So there's two aspects of buying stocks or currencies. One is on strength, on patterns. And then the other one is, of course, on dips, right, on weakness. And so that's where, you know, we'll start talking about a little bit of that next week. But this is your this is your go to this type of pattern uh, works really, really well when you're talking about um, trading, you know, and when you're day trading, uh, this is the same type of deal. Let me grab this trade. I just I just did this trade a couple days ago on Bitcoin. You'll see on Bitcoin. So like when you're day trading, you can use these same type of patterns. So I was trading Bitcoin the other day. Dun, 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 dun. Sorry, I make a lot of trades. Hold on, let me get down to it. So when you're day trading, it can be a similar thing. So like, see this here, right? See like how this thing starts to run and then you start to build a consolidation here, right at 26, 2600 on the DAP. You guys see that? So you start to make this run and then you start to consolidate, right? And what do you need to make it go? You've got to have three tests of the resistance to go. And day, day trading and swing trading is an amazing thing because the rules are actually fairly similar. You're going to look for the same type of patterns. So when you have a test, right, and then you test it again, and now you've tested again for the third time, and see how your 9 EMA is just riding right when it breaks? You want to see that 9 EMA just riding right up under it? What that does is it provides you the protection but also gives you the signal that this thing is ready to go now. So when it goes, you're going to buy as it breaks this trend line. Put your stop under your 20 EMA to give it a little bit of room and some protection. And then now you're off to the races. The key to all trading is waiting and hunting for the pattern. You know, if you can't hunt for it, then it's lost but day trading is the very very similar to swing trade so you got to always be mindful but that flag pattern i'm going to show you a bunch of different patterns over the next couple of weeks but that flag pattern is a go-to in a momentum market okay in a momentum market what you'll see is this type of pattern can serve you very very well after you get a big run look for that consolidation you need a minimum of three to 10 days. So that's just candles though. Because if you're day trading, then it's just 15 minute candles. If you're looking at longer term charts, then hold on one sec. I'm on call. Anybody else's mom always blow them up when you're doing webinars? Well, as an Indian person, my mom's always got me on dial. Kunal, what are you doing? What are you doing? You better not be causing any trouble. All day, all day, every day. So see the same type of deal, whether you're day trading, <laughs> whether you're day trading or swing trading, this type of flag pattern is going to be just an epic thing for you guys to do. Now, 
in terms of what's happening with Bitcoin now, right? What's happening with Bitcoin now? So you've had this huge run and uh, the, there's some news that's coming out about a Bitcoin fork, which is something that people have been talking about for a long time, but it's essentially kind of a, a shift in their technology or some type of technological issue. Um, and so that's kind of caused this thing to just sit in a range for a little bit. But what's going to happen, guys, you, I want you to keep an eye out for this. What did I tell you about? What did I tell you about breakouts? What do you guys, what did I just tell you about breakouts? How many taps do you need for something to break out? Three, right? You need to test the level three times. So I want you to really, over the next week or two or month, watch this level, right? See how we tested it twice already? Good. Two tests never work, by the way, guys. Two tests is for losers. Remember this for the rest of your life. If you ever see a stock near highs and it's only a second test, it very rarely works. Two tests are for losers. Two tests are for pikers. But that third test, it's a glorious thing. That's where dreams are made. It is for that ass. The third test is where you have the energy to build, to break. And this is why. See, price has a memory, guys. And when you are at a level, okay, there's there are sellers at those levels. People have a memory. Imagine you were the asshole that, see, and that's mean. I got to stop talking like that. Sorry. Say you're the guy that bought it 3,000 bucks and then it just tanked. What are you going to do, right? What do you always tell yourself if you were that guy? What you would tell yourself is, if I get my money back, I'm going to sell, right? So when it comes back to 3,000, what's going to happen? You get all them guys say, man, I just got my money back. Woo, I'm going to sell. So there is a level of supply at those levels. Guys, trading is all about supply and demand. Trading is all about supply and demand. Yeah, they're going to try to get out. Goes, you know that that you get that just feeling. You're like, oh, thank the Lord. I got my money back. There is a guy, right? That's how you think. And so you get a level of supply. But the level of supply that's there, every time you test it, you soak up that level of supply. And so when you finally overcome it, that's what's called a breakout, guys. That's the thing. People always have trouble understanding, right? Like what's really a breakout? Well, when you break through that level of supply, now you have something that can be explosive. So now you've come back down, right? And if you start to peak your way up and you test that shit, sorry for the swearing, you test that thing for the third time, Guess what, guys? You are about to have something that could be explosive. So right now we're just in a consolidation phase, which is very, very healthy, right? You can't run from, you know, 800 to 3,000 without having a little bit of a rest, right? It's a... Uh, Right, like it's like if you're, you know, making whoopee with your loved one, your girlfriend, or your wife, and and you, you know, and you gave her all you got, and then guess what happens? You've got to rest for a little bit before you can recharge. And trading is the same way, right? You got to build up your reserves again. And so when you see Bitcoin, it just had an epic run, and it's having its cigarette break. You're right, baby. <laughs> And so once it comes in, I usually, if it breaks on the third time, Mr. Josh, I'm in. If it breaks on the third time, I'm in. You know, sometimes it may not break. It may test it and come back down, and then it's going to go again. So you got to always remember that. You know, you got to always remember that. Now, the same type of deal, like all these guys are just consolidating a little bit. This Litecoin is a 50 DMA rider. It's a ride or die girl right now, guys. She's a ride or die on this 50 SMA. There's a couple different trades that we could take here. Number one, we could probably take a trade here at the 50 SMA. Why? Because it fucking bounces off this thing every time, right? So that could be a potential trade. Uh, the other one is, right, if I'm watching this trend line here, 
to see, see guys, the taps come in numerous different ways. We had one tap, two tap. And if we break here, now we'll have the third tap and we may be a go. And guys, say hi to this guy. First of all, he doesn't even know how to spell jujitsu, right? But he's from Canada. And so he pronounces it jujitsu, uh, but he's pretty cool. He's five foot three, 120 pounds, and he is, he can kill and kill kill men with his bare hands. And he can also lift a TV that's 100 pounds over his head. <laughs> Listen, man, it's crazy that you'd want to spell it like that. Us Americans prefer regular, regular English, right? So back to Litecoin. Guys, tell Jiu-Jitsu to, jiu jiu jitsu to get out of here. <laughs> he can't even spell check his own na YouTube name. <laughs> so one test, two tests. If this thing breaks the third test and we're holding this 50 SMA, this thing is off to the races. So like for me, I have myself an alert set. If this thing breaks about, eh, right, this kind of 45 area, boom. I mean, this thing could go back to 56 in a hot second, in a hot second. So that is very, very, very important, guys. Remember that when you're trending, always look for stories, okay? So I want you to think about this. Yeah, I know Brian, but, you know, I like to hassle him a little bit. I wouldn't be his mentor if I didn't hassle him just a tad. He's one of my best students. He's 25-year-old crypto stock shredder. <laughs> but he's obviously he's not very good at spelling. And he has a very weird car. He has a PT Cruiser, which for a 25 year old is just insane. <laughs> he literally has a, a PT Cruiser. Let me show you Jiu Jitsu's car. He's got a purple PT Cruiser. If you don't know what a PT Cruiser is, he's got one. He's got one that looks just like this. I think he's got rims on it though. <laughs> it's so fucked. <laughs> he's got one just like this. I think it's a convertible though. <laughs> he calls it the purple dinosaur. The name is actually Barney, but he calls it the the PD purple dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. He's one of my good suits. He's literally been to my house now. He's been to my house three times and stayed at my house for a month this year. Um, when you spend almost a whole month with somebody in a year, you, you guys, you know, um, <laughs> you get to do some things. We also had this incident where we ch choked out this um, ambiguously – he might have been a gay cowboy kind of thing, and we got a fight with him. And then he did this jujitsu on him, and dude, it was pretty epic. We were at this like redneck Riviera nightclub, and Taylor gave him the chokehold and goes, chuk, 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 and the guy just like passed out. It, I may have started it though. Hey, <laughs> um, does anybody have any questions on flag patterns right now? Does anybody have any questions on flag patterns right now? Oh, yeah. Hey, anytime, Bri. Yes, and guys, so one of the things to remember is that this type of pattern works even on stocks. Like today, um, hold on here. Today, let me bring up, let me what trade was that? Hold on one second here. Like today, even in the stock market, right? Even in the stock market, if you're thinking about the market. So like I just, my day was somewhat shitty, except I made one epic trade. So I made like 800, I made 978 bucks, but a good chunk of it came on this one trade. IRBT, okay? IRBT. Now, IRBT I did a very, very simple pattern, the same pattern that I just showed you guys, right? Which is a flag pattern. So in IRBT, this is TC2000. This is a um, charting platform that I use. 
So IRBT had this like uh, explosive news out today. Okay, so it had this huge thrust at the open. Remember what I told you guys, what do we do after a thrust? What do we look for? Right, we're men of fucking honor, right? So after a thrust, we look for sideways consolidation if you are a man of honor, which most of us are, right? which most of us are. So you get this huge thrust. So this thing starts to move from 95 to 105. Guys, it's a big move. That's 10 bucks, right? Even if you got a small account, you're trading 100 shares this thing. I mean, you're going you're gonna to have a nice thing, right? And then see what happens here. So around 10 o'clock, this thing gets a 106. And then it hangs out and kind of tests it again at 11 o'clock. See that? So you got 10 o'clock, 106, 11 o'clock, 106, 12 o'clock, 106. And then guess what? It finally breaks. So let's just draw a little horizontal line right across this little bad boy. It's a little turd nugget. And guess what? Guys, this is fucking trading, all right? It's not so complicated. People are complicated. They make trading complicated. People are complicated, so they make trading complicated. So I add in a few hundred shares, this bad boy. I believe I had 500 shares or 400 shares, some give or take, right? And now it's just about, right, selling into these thrusts. So I'm out 100, out 100, out 100, out 100, right? And that's a flag pattern. It doesn't really take, it doesn't take much action to do this. You can do this. So like this is a trade we took the other day. Same type of deal. Right, see how it had a thrust in the morning? And this is for day trading. See how it had a thrust in the morning? Then you're testing and testing and testing and testing. And see how you got your nine EMA coming up right under it? Right up under it, guys. That's what you want to see. You want to see that curl. You want to see the curls for the girls when you're when you're looking for a flag pattern. When you get that nine EMA pushing up right up under it, it's like a, a it's, it's it's like a jock strap. It's just support, right? It's just holding you up. And so when you get the 90 EMA curling up under, now you buy, set your stop, let her rock. Always remember that, guys. Buy, set your stop, let her rock. Buy, set your stop, let her rock. You know what? Um, a couple of people have asked. I've only been trading crypto this year. I'm not some, um, you know... I'm not some crypto fanboy that's like, oh my God, I've been believing this in forever. I go where the fucking money is, right? I go where the money is. That's it. That's all I care. The money right now is in the crypto, so I'm in. If the money's out of the crypto and goes somewhere else, I'm in. Because I trade for one thing. Boats and hoes. That's it, right? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Right? But I trade to make money. And boats and hoes. And so, you know, I always want to be remembered of this. But guys, this flag pattern, this is something so powerful. You can make money just trading this one pattern every day. You hunt for stocks that explode, go sideways, let the 9 EMA curl up under it, and now you're good to go. And every single day, you're going to find stocks that do that type of action. So just something to uh, just something to kind of remember, you know, that this is this is the beauty of the market itself. Boom, 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 boom. Anybody got any questions? Hold on, I know there were some questions in here. Let me get off this screen share for a second. Boom, 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 boom. Holla dollar, baby, holla dollar. All right, cool. Um, let's open this thing up to some questions. And, guys, I'll be on. Um, I'm actually flying to Spain tomorrow or Wednesday next week, so I'll come on on Thursday, and uh, we'll talk cryptos again, and we'll go in and, um, of course, uh, talk about whatever else uh, you want to do. And, guys, every trading is trading. So whether you trade futures, Forex, cryptos, whatever, it's all the same shit, right? Patterns are patterns. We go where the money's at. Um, I use GDAX for um, I use GDAX for um, my trading. Um, I got a uh, I got a nine eleven targa.
So yeah, I use I use a couple different things. So I have one account at GDAX, a GDAX, and it's pretty cool. Like I have accounts everywhere, um, and I don't keep much money in all these things. I look for I put five or six thousand in each one. This GDAX account in particular, I started with a thousand bucks in there, and I just built it up um, trade by trade. You know what? You buy 50 share, you know, you buy 10 shares of ETH and it rips 20 bucks. Guess what you have? $200. You build it piece by piece. So I have an account at GDAX, which is my, which is I do more trade than GDAX in any of them. Um, then I have another kind of Polynex. I spell, I always spell fucking Polynex wrong. Hold on. Um, oh, I'm not even screen sharing right now. No wonder. Duh. Hold on. My bad. Dun, 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 dun. Cool. So, um, like I was saying, can you guys see my screen? All right, cool. So I, I keep an account at GDAX. And then um, I keep an account at... So like you'll see, I don't keep much. I'll put about 5,000 in three different ones. And then I also have a small kind of crack in. Um, and I'm just kind of testing out which ones I really like. The problem I didn't like with Kraken was they took me forever to verify me for like stage three, blah, blah, blah. And all these brokers, by the way, will have their own charting. So you don't have to necessarily pay for Coinigy. Hold on. Signing into these things are a bit sometimes. Oh. They didn't do it. Sometimes they make you do that uh, Google Authenticator bullshit. I'm like, sometimes you do the Google Authenticator so many times, you're like, I just rather, <laughs> I would just rather get my shit stolen than fucking Google Authenticator any, any anymore. So, like, you can see, like, a. Uh, you can go into some of these bad boys and uh, their charts are pretty good. Um, their charts are pretty good. So like, you know, you can do some stuff here. Um, you know, their charts are pretty clean and you can do your indicators and stuff. You can add in your EMAs. Um, there is no pattern day trade in cryptos. And that's why I, I think it's really good for some of you guys. Guys, in stocks, you got to have a little bit more money, right? And, you know, to be able to day trade. In cryptos... Uh, TJ, you know, you just saw jujitsu trades. He put like 300 bucks in his account to start it. He just kind of started growing it and growing it. And um, that really, you know, because you can just go in and trade really small. See, the thing is, say Ethereum, right? It's 200 bucks. You don't have to buy a whole share of Ethereum. You can buy 0.5 shares, 0.2 shares, 0.1 shares. So you don't have to actually have um you know a whole lot of money and that'll just get you started you know that just gets you started and look you're probably not going to turn 200 bucks into a million that's not going to happen i mean the, it could happen right but that's not logical but you can gain experience and you can grind your way a little bit at a time so that you can grow your account the other thing to remember is so, like, for example, let me show you something. Hold on. So, like, say I wanted to buy five Ethereum here, okay? So, I've got my – I got an order here. I'm just hypothetical. Well, it's not hypothetical. Now I'm stuck buying it. Just for you guys, though. Um, so, say I put in an order here on the bit, okay? What that means is I'm adding liquidity. So if I put it on the bid, and when this order gets filled, that that trade will be with no commission. But like if I wanted to buy two Ethereum at market, meaning I just wanted to buy it on the ask, say I wanted to put in 500 bucks and I did a market order, so I'd get charged a dollar commissions. But like see, a lot of my a lot of my trades will be zero fees. Um, so that costs a dollar to buy two there. But like, see, I'm trying to buy five here on the, the bid. See, I just got filled. There was no commission on that. 
Hey, Mike, I didn't see uh, your question on the BCC. What's up, baby? So no commission on that. Now well, I'm stuck with all these eth extra Ethereums, but, <laughs> but that's the price you pay for YouTube, right? So you can see if you put in an order, as long as it's on the bid, you will not have commissions. You know what? I'm like, I haven't noticed that big of a discrepancy um, from trading view and Coinigy. Uh, not a huge, whatever it is, it's probably negligible. Hey, Dennis, what are you guys referring to? Um, you know what? I'm probably not going to hold through the August 1st uh, meeting. Um, unless it crashed like right before August 1st, then I would, right? Because I'd have this awesome cheap price. But, um, you know, I wouldn't just in general hold through it. So I got Polynex, I got GDAX, and I've got a handful of others that, you know, are cracking in Bitfinex. They're all pretty good. So GDAX is the most well-known because it connects to Coinbase. Um, so it's the easiest to set up. <coughs> Polynex is a bitch to set up. Um, so is Bitfinex. So just kind of be mindful that, you know, Coinbase is, they got probably the worst customer service and the shittiest platform, but... You can hook your bank account or your debit card and ACH or put a credit card and just trade. Whereas like Polynex and Bitfinex, especially if you're American, they're like so anti-American. They're like, oh, you can't put in US dollars. You got to do this. And they make you jump through all these damn hoops. <clears throat> so sometimes it's just better to go into GDAX and Coinbase and then you can transfer your um, coins to somewhere else, which is a whole nother subject we'll get into one of these days. Um, you can definitely short it. I've oddly made more money shorting um, ETH than I did longing it. <laughs> but I'm naturally, I just, I see shorts easier than I see longs. Hey, Tom, typically if you're just adding the liquidity, meaning you're on the bid, or if you're selling and you're on the ask, um, you're not going to get hit with, you won't get hit with um, commissions. Um, how do you find, okay, let's open this thing up to some questions and then, um, uh, we'll get this party started. Hey, Mike, why don't you just cruise over to the house, man? You're, aren't you down the street? What the fuck? I mean, you were my first personal trainer. Hey, Mike, check out, the, check out my muscles. Guys, say hi to Mike LeMay. He was my personal trainer 10 years ago. I was a hot wreck when I came to him. He's a genius. Uh, question, how do you find 9 EMA pullbacks? How do you find 9 EMA pullbacks that worked on the cryptos? Uh, they worked really well, and actually, they work really well intraday. So if, like, you have a huge pop, and then you pull back to your 9, they, they seem to work really well. Um, what type of cryptocurrency chart is this? I just hopped on the webinar. Um, I was using TradingView. Um, so, uh, and this will be recorded, guys. Uh, but my primary is ETH, LTC, and BTC. Uh, do you ever buy support? Yes, it's a whole different animal, but I do buy support also. Um, that's something that we'll talk about in uh, one of these sessions. Uh, do you place an order for the breakout or enter at market before the breakout? I typically will level in right before the breakout so I don't have to chase it and do a market order and have to pay the commissions. If you're looking to a flag intraday, do you pay attention to the longer term time frame? Yes, guys. Um, when you're thinking about trading, your longer term time frame really will um, it will really give you an idea of where you want to go. It'll really give you an idea of where you want to go, and so uh, that becomes really important. Ooh, a little gap on the QQQs. Can you trade these on Thinkorswim from Ameritrade? No. I do ever look at Chinese, uh, the Chinese markets. Uh, so I, we trade Chinese stocks all the time. Uh, Momo, Sina, Sohu, 
Wuba. Um, there's a handful of them that we trade really quite a bit, a YY. So there's probably those five I trade quite a bit. Um, so I trade Chinese stocks I trade in the US, but I don't go and hunt for Chinese stocks in China. I don't even know if that's allowed or how that would work, um, but we do trade Chinese stocks here all the time. So uh, yeah, Dennis, uh, I, I I saw your question. Yeah, um, you know we trade ADRs, but not the actual go into the market. You could probably go into the market, uh, into that market, uh, if you had your own hedge fund or something like that. You might trade interact or brokers, but most big companies around the world are listed in the United States, right? So like Toyota <clears throat> is a Japanese car company, but there you can trade it in the U.S., right? Uh, Ericsson or right there's a million European companies Louis Vuitton right but they trade here um, those tickers hey uh, hey Slumman how you doing what's the best small broker for a small account uh, oh if you live in Canada the rules are so much better for you by the way let me just tell you something. In Canada, there's no pattern day trade rules. So you can go in and um, you can trade at Quest Trade, uh, Interactive Brokers, and there's not going to be any pattern day trade rule. Um, it's pretty epic. Hey, Hack, he said uh, J Chinese and Japanese. <laughs> Hey, uh, Abe Signet. Um, so when you're exiting these, I usually just scale out. Um, it would take hours to kind of go into the different cell rules that you may have. Um, but I typically like to scale out some into the first thrust and then I I'll put a stop at my buy price and then let the rest run. And then kind of when the trend ends, um, I get out. Uh, oh, good question. Uh, what are some mistakes you see people make when trading cryptocurrency? Um, <clears throat> number one, uh, number one, the, I think the biggest mistake is that, you know, they go in with a buy and hold mentality when the market overheats. So when the market is hot and all these currencies are just rolling, everybody wants in, right? And so they're coming in. And they're like the last man to the gangbang, right? It, it can work, could be fun, but it is slightly dangerous, right? And so they come in and they want to just buy and get rich, but the thing's already gone up a thousand percent, right? They're a little bit late. So you got to go in with the trader mindset of hit, hit and runs till really, really unique opportunities come in, you know? You've got to let them come pull back. But that's the nature of everything. When something overheats, everybody wants in. But then it's often a little bit late. But it's fun to day trade. You can do short-term trades, but don't marry it. Uh, the other mistake that I think people do uh, with cryptocurrency is, you know, they just, they don't manage any of their risks. See, in the stock market, the average stock may move up or down, three or four or five percent, for example, a lot of stocks where in ETH, there have been days where it's moved 20, 30, 40 percent in the day. So it's much harder to manage your risk. So they go in too big of size, right? They go in too big a size and then they can't handle the range and they end up losing a lot of money. And then you sell out and then it goes, right? So, you know, being aware of the range and managing your risk is really, really important because there is a risk. When you have so much volatility and something's moving up or down, we only think about how much money we can make, right? How much money we can make because we want, if we're only thinking about what if it goes up, but you have to always be thinking, what if it goes down, right? How do I account for that 30, 40% range? if it doesn't move in my favor. 
Hey, Anthony, I actually use 15 minute charts for the cryptos to account for the range. In day trading stocks, I use five minute charts for cryptos 15s. Hey, Dennis, you know, I'm noticing that kind of the like the the, the early, early morning, that four or five in the morning, uh, you get some really good action in the cryptos. And then, you know, it, it, they move around in the U.S. hours. Uh, then it kind of picks back up for a certain period of night. But then, like, it's dead for a while, like, you know, 10 p.m. I, I was trying to trade it at night a lot. And, like, that kind of 10 p.m. to 1 a.m., I was staying up all fucking night, by the way, just trading these things because it was so fun. But that kind of 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. can be really dead sometimes, and it's a little bit lonely. And, frankly, you question a lot of uh, – your life choices at that time of night because you're sitting here <laughs> with your computer and I'm, you know, I got a stand up desk. Like I'm standing up and I'm like, I should be married right now. I should have some children is I'm just trading these cryptocurrencies at night. I don't even know what the fuck they are. What the fuck is a Bitcoin? Why am I up? And you really start to question some things. <laughs> I think that early morning push, that 4, 5, 6 a.m. where you get a lot of good action, um, that's a good time. And then the U.S. markets is also a good time. Um, and they move around a, they move around decent amount like um, throughout. So you can see like you would see this morning. That's what I mean, this 5 a.m. See that? Like who the fuck's going to wake up at 5 a.m.? Well, you can if you stay up till 2. You can wake up if you go to sleep at 10, right? Um so you get this really good action uh, early in the morning. <laughs> oh, shit. Hi, right, bros. Uh, guys, uh, I do have to go, but uh, feel free. Like, if you guys want to, like, email me or something, uh, it's K-U-N-A-L at B-U-L-L-S-O-N dot W-S. Um, I'll put in, I'll leave it in my, uh, I'll leave it in the profile here also. But feel free to email me about this stuff. Like you guys, uh, you know, totally can uh, hit me up with questions, um, whatever you want to do. And I'm definitely going to be uh, back. Oh, there it is. I'm definitely going to be back in a week. And we're going to do this thing again. Let's build a fucking army of crypto assassins, of crypto shredders, of crypto slayers running around you know saying fuck the real world and right we'll, we'll, we'll get this thing going uh be careful of that august 1st date um hey my milo i didn't see it do you know what will you re-hit me i'm pretty good about text messages actually because i always answer them when i'm on the when i'm on the shitter Hey, the Canadian guy, try interactive brokers. All right, guys. I, I love you guys. I, I, I'm grateful that you guys came and always show up. And uh, we're going to make this a regular thing. And, dude, we're going to get this thing so hot, man. We're going to get this thing uh, hot to trot. So always be mindful that. We've got the hottest market around. There's a lot of trenders going on, and we shall slay. Coo, 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 coo. Guys, it's been real. It's been fun. Remember, a couple words of advice. It's never, you're never too young or too old to make money. Number two, never be the last man to the gangbang. Peace in the Middle East. That's an old 80s term, but it still applies to this day. <laughs>